close bedroom curtain. Okay. Now obviously you've got the open and close options, just to show. Pause it. You can close it as well. You can drag the slider here. So that oh, works well curtain. too. Pull it a little bit. There you go. Hi guys, today we're unboxing and setting up some smart tech from a company called Switchbot. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I've got a number of products here. First of all, the Switchbot curtain. So there's two of these and you will need two of these if you've got obviously two curtains. So one to control each one. So you can use them to obviously close them and then open them. And we've also got a Switchbot hub mini. And then we've got a thermometer and hygrometer. And finally, a Switchbot remote so that all the devices can work together. So we'll have a brief look around the packaging of one of these. So SwitchBot Curtain, a couple of things to highlight. So it works with Alexa, works with Google Assistant, Siri Shortcuts, works with IFTTT, Smart Things, and Clover. Supports different rail types. So this is the iRail type. I'll have details in the description of the different rail types supported. Come around this side, set up is simple, download the app, install on your existing curtain, calibrate and enjoy. Looking at the back here, best companion just shows the devices that are compatible together with this. Moving on to this side, install in 30 seconds, schedule, touch and go, compatibility. So let's open up all the packaging and see what we get. Okay, so I've laid out everything you get in the packaging. So let me briefly go through the items one by one. So in terms of the switch box curtain, both boxes are identical. You get a USB A2 type C connector here for charging the device. Cable quality feels good on this. You get a clip used if you only had a single curtain. Looking at the SwitchBot device itself, in terms of height, it's not too big, but thickness wise, it does look a little bit chunky. And if we come in close there, you can see the input voltage is five volts, one amp on here. Now coming around the side, you've got a button here. You've got the charge point here and an LED indicator just down there. And the way this works, you've got two parts to this. So this end clips onto here, as you can see, and the way you'd attach it to your rail is literally just pulling this, putting it against the rail and then locking it into position. So it's as simple as that to install. Now in terms of the area here, just got a wheel here to assist in moving across the rail. And then finally, as part of the packaging, you've got a little clip here that helps open this up. So if I push this in, there you go, opens that up. And then coming around this way, if I push it in here, there you go, it comes up. That's how you'd open it up. All plasticky in build and matte white finish around there. You've got the branding over here, SwitchBot, and general build quality feels okay. Next, we've got the SwitchBot Hub Mini and small device and all matte finish on there. You can see the branding there coming over here. You've got the power point there. It can be mounted via a sticker that you get on there, so a 3M sticker and you get a power cable, which is USB-A to micro USB. Build quality seems fine as well on this one. Surprise, this isn't a type C cable though. Next, we've got the thermometer and hygrometer and looking at this nice compact in design, the numbers you're seeing there are just a sticker that's on here. Coming around the back, you've got a button up here. Looks like that flips between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then you've got a battery compartment. And if I flip that open, the device takes two AAA batteries, which it comes with, which is good. You don't have to buy anything in addition. And it's all of a matte white finish on here. And you also get a sticker if you wanted to mount it against the wall somewhere, so stick it straight on. Next, we've got the SwitchBot remote. It's a small device here, two buttons on there. One has a slight recess on there, all matte finish around here, curved around the edges, as you can see. Two holes over here. You can attach a string onto there. And then coming around the back, you've got the battery compartment. If I open that up, it takes the CR2450 three volt battery. Comes with a sticky pad on here. So Velcro on here, so you can attach it to a surface. And build wise, it seems fine. Let's make a start at setting up these SwitchBot curtain devices. So I'm at my Android phone here. If I go to the Play Store, this is the app we're after, SwitchBot. So you just get it installed and you'll be asked to sign up with them. And then once you've signed in, this is what you're presented with. So I'll click open. There you go, so it's asking to turn on Bluetooth. So these devices can talk and communicate via Bluetooth. So allow to that. Next, it's asking about location services and we'll go for keep while in use access. And there you go, Bluetooth is turned on. Let's click on the plus. So it's scanning for Bluetooth devices and you can see it's picked up the two curtain devices and the remote as well. So let's click curtain and we need to start pairing. So if I hold on to the button here for two seconds, Flashing away, so that means it's in pairing. Next to that, 
There you go, it's found it next to that. Open mode, so there's three different options here. So if you're going from left to right or right to left, or if you've got two curtains and you're going from the middle, so that's what I've got here. So if I click on that one, and it's just highlighting you will need two SwitchBot curtain devices for that scenario. So yes to that. Now it's saying you need another curtain device. So it's not other curtain not found, it's saying. So we need to add another one in, so plus. And now we need to go into pairing. So if I hold on to that, this one's in pairing now. If I click next to that, and there you go, it's found that. And there you go, it's added in. So it's simple as that. Next thing is the calibration for this. So this is where you need to put it on the rail and you need to tell the device how long it needs to travel to get to each side. So we'll select go to calibration. I'm at my curtain rail here and the rail type is the I rail type. Now what you need to do, um, I've got obviously two curtains. I'll unhook one of the sides, you can see. So we've got a slight gap now between the two bits. Then we take one end of the SmartBot curtain and if I push that, you can see it expands out. And then what you do, you just clip it into position. And just in short, it can easily slide along. You can see there, there's no issues there. Then you take the other side. And one thing to note, the side with the branding is the side inside the room. And then the same thing with this, press the adjuster there, place that into position, make sure that can easily move along. And then what you do, you just lock it into position again, and there you go. And then what you do, you take the clip and clip that back into position, and there you go, you're done with that. So let me do the other one next. Next, we need to calibrate the curtains. So the left one needs to be put into the open position, so you can use the arrows at the bottom to position it correctly. So let's get it to the perfect open position. That's fine. Next to that, next we need to get it into the closed position. There you go, that's perfect. Next to that, next we need to do the same thing for the curtain on the right. So let's get it into the open position. There you go, that's perfect. Next to that, let's get it into the closed position now. Perfect. So next to this, and now we test both opening and closing the curtains fully. So let's just click this button. There you go, open fully. And now let's close them. And there you go, closed perfectly. And now we can just click the finish button. And it's as simple as that to get the curtains calibrated. Now coming over to the interface here, you can see battery levels on each of the devices. So the one on the left is 91% and the one on the right is 90%. Get an indicator over here and it says it's disconnected at the moment. If I click here. So that relates to the solar panel. So we don't have the solar panel option on there, but the solar panel will be given a trickle charge if you had it connected. Now obviously you've got the open and close options just to show. Pause it. You can close it as well. You can drag the slider here. So that works well too. So one thing to note, you can't slide one of the sliders. It automatically slides the other one as well. Coming down below, then you've got light sensing beta. So coming in here. So the devices themselves can measure lighting coming into a room. And from that, what you can do, you can get the curtains automatically closing or opening accordingly. So now if I click data source here, you've got the curtain devices there. So 5C is the one on the left and 03 is the one on the right. Now this is pulling off the data from the devices there. So 24 hour, three day average. Now if I go to the plus, if the light levels coming are above a certain value or below a level, you can either get them closing the curtains or opening. You can pick the motion mode as well, either the performance mode or go over to silent mode. Valid period. So you can say these options are only valid on certain days or during a certain period. And coming down below, you can see the data we saw before. It's a very useful option to have. So if you're in a situation, obviously you don't wanna to have to keep changing the timer on these things. You can do it off lighting level, which is really good. Now coming back from here, back again. Next, you've got a delay option, and this is a good one. So if you were going out, for instance, and you didn't want to close the curtain straight away, you can set it up to close automatically after a certain period. So a delay goes by and it can either open it or close it. So I'll set it to one minute, click confirm, and there you go, you can see a countdown happening. Let's give it a moment. And there you go, automatically opening up. 
after the delay. Okay, so now below there, you've got schedule. So you can set separate tasks up for opening and closing at certain time intervals. And again, you've got the option to open it a certain amount if you wanted to, or close it a certain amount. So you're not limited to just opening and closing. You can go for a certain percentage if you wanted, which is nice to have. And below that, you've got motion mode. You can set the speed levels you want on there. Back from there, back again, and then finally you've got motion mode and in there obviously you can see silent mode and performance mode. And there you go, there's the options available and quite impressed by how well this worked. I was a bit dubious how it would be, uh, but I'm impressed. The fact you can set timers on this, which is good. The light level one is a good one too. The fact if it does drop below a certain level, you can get it automatically closing or opening. It's a very impressive functionality from this. So now looking at the SwitchBot curtain settings here, you've got advanced settings first of all, and in here you've got two, so touch and go. This is where you can pull the curtain slightly and it will move by itself till it gets to the end. And then you've got a light option, obviously that's a light for the device, back from here. Then you've got calibration, so if you need to recalibrate your device, this is where you'd come in. Then you've got pair with a remote, so clicking in there. Then you've got cloud service, you can turn that on to communicate with some of these services here. So Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa, for instance. Back from there, then we've got log, you can see the actions that have been performed. Then we've got firmware and battery. Battery is actually inside the devices and you'd actually remove them and plug them in via the type C cable just to charge up the devices. As you can see there, 92% on each device at the moment and I've not charged it up in any way. That's how it's come as it's come out of the box. Back from here, FAQ, back again. And then you've got ungroup, so you can ungroup the two devices. Finally, delete at the bottom. Now coming over to the top, you've got the MAC address there. And that's it, that's all the options you have available. Next thing worth showing, if I go into curtain settings and advanced settings, you've got an option called touch and go. So with this, you can literally just pull a little bit on the curtain and it will just start moving automatically. And you can see both of them are moving as they've both been calibrated. Now the advantage of this is you're not reliant on the app in any way, you can just use a pull motion to do it or even the switch. And the same applies for opening. So if I pull a little bit, there you go. Excellent and very useful functionality to have available on here. So next I've got my sound level meter here. Let's measure the sound levels coming out of the motor. So if I go silent for a moment, ambient levels in the room are about 34 decibels. So now on performance mode, if we open the curtain, okay, so we're getting about 52 decibels from there. So now we've changed the setting to silent mode. Let's open the curtain now. So slightly lower, nothing too dramatic on there. Couple of decibels, I'd say. Next, let's add in the SwitchBot remote. So coming over to the app, if I click the plus, and it's scanned in the background and it's picked it up at the top here. Also, you can see it down there. So I'll pick it from down here. You can see to start pairing, you just hold on to the two buttons there. So if I hold on to them for about two seconds, it's just beeped and there's an LED at the bottom flashing away. So next to that, it's picked up the device. So next, and there you go, add it in as simple as that. Then you've got pair with a remote. So clicking in there, I've got my remote over here, it gives a beeping noise and I can just select the remote. There you go. So now if I click over here, so this button would be to fully open. I'll tick that, okay? And if I now click that, and I can do fully close for the other button and confirm that. And there you go, simple as that to pair up with the remote. Next, just to show the SwitchBot curtains working with the remote. So if I press the button here, the beep is controllable, so you can turn it off if you didn't want that. And there you go. And now if I press the other button, and there you go, perfect, works really well with the remote. Next, just to show the options available in the remote. So if I come on to advanced settings, you've got light and sound settings on here. So you can turn off the light or turn off any sort of sounds it makes. Firmware and battery, details here. FAQ, finally you got delete at the bottom. Now coming over to the three dots, you've got the MAC address over here for it. And that's it, that's all the options you have available on it. Next, let's add in the thermometer. So again, click the plus and it's picked it up at the top there, so you can click it there, or click it over here, so meter, and now it's saying to hold on to the button at the back until the Bluetooth icon on the screen flashes, and there you go, the icon's flashing now, I can click next, and there you go, it's picked it up, next to that, add it in, bingo. 
Next, let me show the options available within the thermometer app. So initially you've got desired condition here. Coming in here, you can set an alarm up for certain temperatures or humidity levels. Then you've got calibration. If you need to calibrate the device, coming back from there, cloud service. So if you wanted to remotely connect to the device, this is how you do it. Just turn on the cloud service back from here, firmware and battery details over here and delete. Now coming over to the three dots in the corner, you can see the Mac address of the device and that's it. That's all the options you have available on here. Next, let's move on to setting up the hub mini. So if I click plus on the app again, click hub mini and next we need to hold down the button over here for three seconds. You see it rapidly flashing. Now I'll just click next. Now we need to enter in our Wi-Fi details. So just to note, this only works on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So let me enter in my details off camera. I entered in my password and now it's added in. You can see it just over here, clicking on it. That's the options you have available. So you can see the network connectivity on here. Coming back, you've got log, coming back, firmware version, and then finally delete. And that's all the options you have available on here. Next, just to demonstrate the functionality of the Hub Mini. Now coming over to the app, if I just click the device, this is what you're presented with. And if I click add appliance, so this is where you can add in different devices and control them via the Hub Mini. So for instance, your TV. So I've got my TV remote control over here and the Hub Mini is just there. Now if we select TV, pick the brand, so LG and click start learning. And it's saying after the light indicator goes off, press the remote button once and wait until the light indicator flashes. And now if we press the power button, and there you go, that's what we presented with. So now if I turn it on, there you go. Looks like it's programmed in now. Let's try the options on there. So volume, there you go, volume's amending. Let's mute work, yep, mute works as well. Menu brings up the options. So really cool, simple as that. So now I can just select correct and save, just leave TV in there. Got a way of now controlling our TV from this. So you can add in a number of devices and just to use them, you just select it. And there you go, you've got the remote on there. And now as well as that, if I come back, go to schedule, add a task and I can set a time and I can say what days I want it to happen and the action we want, just pick up a remote, you can just say, press the power, set a delay on that as well. And then you can get it setting other options. So for instance, a good use for this would be if you've gone out and you wanted to give the impression you are at home and you wanted the TV to come on. So this would be a good device to help you do that because then you can have the TV coming on at a certain time, turn the volume up to a certain level if you wanted to, turn it down again, or even turn it off as well. And you can schedule that all in and cool functionality from here. Now, if I come back and we turn off our Wi-Fi and our Bluetooth. Let's see what's visible. So the TV gets presented like that in there. So that's quite interesting. So if I now click on that and on my data signal, obviously it's connecting with the hub and there you go, I can control my TV. So you could actually be out of the home and actually turn your TV on automatically if you wanted to so, or any other devices. You can do it on remote control air conditioners, for instance, amplifiers to even amplify the sound more. So interesting bit of functionality available. And coming over here, you can see the other devices in there as well. So the thermometer here, see the details on that, details on the remote, details on the curtain, if I click on that. It's a cool bit of functionality available from this. Next, just to show remote connectivity. So I've turned off my Wi-Fi, as you can see. Now for remote connectivity to work, you're gonna need the Hub Mini. So when it's on your network and it's configured, it will control the devices automatically. No additional configuration will be needed. So now if I click open, there you go, you can hit pause and I can slide it out a bit more. Pause again. And now if I click close, how cool is that? So remotely you can control your curtains without opening any ports in addition on your router. Just works as soon as you add on the Hub Mini. Next, just to show how to get the SwitchBot curtains working with the Google Home and the Amazon voice control devices. So coming over to the app, if I now go over to settings, cloud service, and I've turned it on. So once you've turned it on, the next thing you have to do is obviously link into the service or skill. So let's come over to the home app here, go to the plus, set up device, works with Google, and you just search for the service called SwitchBot, enter in the credentials you used on the app, and it links in with that service. Now coming back from here, if we scroll down, you can see it there, bedroom curtain. So I've renamed the device bedroom curtain in the app. 
So now, if I unmute my Google device. The microphone is back on. I can say, open bedroom curtain 10%. Sure, opening the bedroom curtain. There you go. Close bedroom curtain. Got it, closing the bedroom curtain. Open bedroom curtain. Sure, opening the bedroom curtain. There you go, works really well and easy to set up as you see. Next, let me show the same functionality on the Amazon device. So if I come over to the Amazon app here, and just to note, you need cloud services on for this to work as well. We go to more, skills and games, search for SwitchBot. That's the skill we're after. If I go in there, just enable that, enter in your credentials and link into the skill. Now coming over to devices, coming along all devices, and you've got bedroom curtains. If I go in there, you can see there's an open option. And if I click there, there you go, it opens up, press it again, select close, and there you go, it closes. Now in terms of voice control, if I say, open bedroom curtain. Okay. Close bedroom curtain 50%. I don't know how to set bedroom curtain to that setting. Okay, so that's not available in here. Now if I say close bedroom curtain. Okay. Now coming over here in settings, you can see the standard options there. Now coming back to the Google Home side of things, just to show there's not actually any options available on here. So if I look in bedroom curtains, you've not got the ability to do anything from the app there. So the Google Home side of things has the advantage, I'd say only because you can do a percentage on there and open and close as well, even though you can't control it from the app. Whereas I think it's a little bit limited with the Alexa side only because you can't say the percentage side. But other than that, basic functionality works, so you can open and close it as well. And it's nice having in the Alexa app, the ability to do it from the app as well. So there you go, simple to set up, as you see. Next, just to highlight the voice control available with the thermostat. So with the Alexa device, I can say, what's the temperature on loft thermostat? The loft thermostat temperature is 20.6 degrees. And you can do the same thing with the Google device. So you can say, what's the temperature on the loft thermostat? It's currently 20.5 degrees. Okay, interesting to see it slightly varies between the two devices, but you can see for yourself, voice control works and obviously you can find out the temperature. In terms of humidity, neither device can give that value. So if you wanted to remotely keep an eye on the temperature in a certain room, that's possible obviously with this. And again, even when you're away from home, you can keep an eye on the temperature as well. Another thing to show is the voice control controlling devices. So if you've added devices in with the Hub Mini, you can say, turn on Loft TV. Okay. Increase volume on Loft TV. Okay. Decrease volume on Loft TV. Okay. There you go. And the same thing's available with the Google device. So if I say, increase volume on Loft TV, decrease volume on Loft TV, turn off Loft TV. Sure. Turning off Loft TV. There you go, works well. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of the SwitchBot curtains. Really impressed by this, simple bit of tech, links onto your curtains and you can remotely control them and control them from an app as well. Very simple to set up and configure. Like the fact it has a button as well, just to enable you to remotely control it as well. Nice set of accessories as well. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards for some more smart tech. Drop me a like if you've liked this video. Let me know what you thought of these smart curtains. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.